Okay, so uh, I'm Prashant Bangle, and uh, I work as a, a senior member of technical staff for the mobile virtualization uh, team at VMware. Um, today, I'll be talking about uh, uh, CPU and memory virtualization. I'll be introducing virtualization and then uh, um, the perspective of virtualization uh, concepts from the point of view of CPU and memory. Um, and I'll also be talking about uh, mobile phone virtualization later on. Specifically, I'll be talking about uh, the ARM architecture and how we virtualize that. Um, along the way, I'll be talking about various alternatives and options. And sometimes I may point to uh, decisions that we've taken within the space of options. Uh, and I, I'll allude to why we did so. But uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, present uh, all the alternatives as far as possible. Um, First of all, even before we dive into uh, you know, what virtualization is and how you can implement it for CPU and memory and on ARM in particular and so on, um, first of all, I just wanted to uh, you know, quickly talk about why we should even care about virtualization. Uh, server consolidation has been uh, you know, one of the topmost market reasons for virtualization becoming popular most recently. Uh, the idea is that you can actually um, convert the underutilization uh, that's, already present, uh, that's already present in the existing server markets uh, into uh, virtual machines. And then you can actually utilize your resources better. And this results in significant cost savings, not just in terms of uh, you know, capital expenditures for the equipment, but also in terms of uh, the space you require for the data centers, the power consumption by the servers, and so on. Um, this has been increasingly used uh, for even virtual desktops outside of the server markets now. Um, Another reason you would use virtualization is for uh, simplified management. Uh, you, you can actually provision data centers, monitor data centers very, uh, in, in a very simplified manner. Um, you can actually do dynamic load balancing. You can do uh, you know, migration of uh, virtual machines across servers and so on. Um, it also results in uh, you know, very good availability because of very sophisticated mechanisms like uh, automatic restart, fault tolerance, disaster recovery, and all these cool applications of virtualization. Um, you can also use it for test and development. And you know, one specific application I would like to point out here that's uh, really cool, in my opinion, is um, the, ap the, the application called Deterministic Replay, where you can actually record how a virtual machine is executing instruction by instruction and actually have a deterministic replay of it at a later point of time so that you can actually do debugging in a very simplified manner. Um, and this allows you to do some very, very powerful things which you couldn't have done as easily or, or with uh, minimal intervention as virtualization would allow, would allow you. Um, recently, we have actually uh, started working on uh, uh, mobile virtualization at VMware. We, uh, are actually trying to apply the concept of virtualization uh, towards a particular use case on mobile phones. The idea being you can actually uh, use, your, uh, use a single piece of a physical phone for both your home phone and your work phone as a, as a, as a sort of a dual persona application. And I'll talk about this uh, in more detail later. Um, but you know, suffice it to say that virtualization has you know, many, many applications that are really uh, uh, making a difference in the server market, in the desktop market, and hopefully in the near future in the mobile phone market as well. Um, the outline is going to be uh, that I'll talk about a, a little bit of CPU background in the beginning. I'll just remind you a little uh, about uh, how computer architecture looks, about how um, the CPU and MMU look, and so on. I'll introduce the concepts of virtualization and virtual machines and give you a formal definition of virtual machines. Um, and then I, I'll then talk about uh, specific alternatives for doing CPU and memory virtualization. Um, and the outline for the overall uh, session today is going to be that uh, you know, after this one uh, talk, I'll actually be diving into another uh, talk about ARM virtualization in particular, where I actually instantiate the concepts that we talk about in this uh, uh, talk to actually uh, the specific architecture that runs on almost all mobile phones, which is the ARM architecture. Um, 
so feel free to interrupt me at any point if you uh, have any questions or if you uh, want to clarify a, a, a particular concept that I touch upon. Um, I thought it would be educative for us to actually look at um, computer architecture, um, you know, uh, the, the overall view of the computer architecture just before we dive into specifics. Um, as you might remember from your computer architecture class, uh, if you have taken one, you know, um, there's the CPU, the MMU, the memory, the, uh, the memory controller itself, and then all of this would uh, talk on an interface to uh, the uh, to some high-speed I/O devices and some low-speed I/O devices on separate buses, and um, most of the I/O devices, as well as uh, um, some other interesting topics, will actually be covered by my colleague Harvey uh, on Wednesday. And uh, today, most of our focus is going to be on the CPU and the memory uh, components of the architecture. Uh, 